All right, so the YouTube gods clearly want me to make a flash reaction video of some sort where I talk about my opinion on the Flash movie with this really great DC cinematic universe they're making out there uh, at WB. Really awesome stuff they're doing. No one really seems to care about the other stuff, so let's talk about Flash. You know, if I'm not chasing trends, then <laughs> what am I doing on YouTube? Making content I want to make? That's freaking crazy. No one cares about Andor. That's that's stupid. Level design? <laughs> What's level design? Does it have the Flash in it? And of course, I'm probably going to get copyrighted because WB copyrights all of their trailers. Um, and then I have to dispute it every fucking time. So yeah, let's go through that again. Let's go through that again. What do I think of the Flash thing? Of course, like all of my stuff, I'm pretty critical. I don't know what these other people are saying. I don't watch trailer reactions anymore. I don't know what they're saying. The DC universe is a mess, okay? It's always been a mess. I respect the Snyder Cut for what it was. It was the more cohesive aspect of the DC universe. Was it like, did I want a whole universe for that? No, I thought the movie was cool though, for what it was by itself in a vacuum. Just wanna make it clear, just in case this video like blows up for no reason at all. Uh, I'm not a Snyder fanboy. I just kind of like the Justice League because it was actually consistent with what it was trying to be. A lot of other movies are kind of tugged and pulling on different tones and different ideas like they want to be a comedy at, at the same time they want to be dark and gritty but they make jokes and stuff the Snyder Cut was more visually especially consistent BVS was really not that great uh, I just like Justice League that's all I'm saying here and I think James Gunn friends agree with me as well that like they should have started over completely. And I don't know if James Gunn actually was responsible for like some of the stuff coming back like Aquaman. I'm not sure if it's going to be Jason Momoa again in Aquaman 2. Probably is. Basically like certain things are showing up again like Amanda Waller's the same actor. The Suicide Squad kind of exists. Peacemaker kind of exists in this new universe. That kind of makes sense. But this, this universe is such a mess and kind of already had some like soft reboots here and there throughout the whole just disaster that it's like be like okay i just have to pretend like that didn't happen this character didn't exist i have to like figure out where the lore starts for this new universe what is canon and what's not it's i just wish they started over completely i think there's some contractual something at wb where a lot of this stuff couldn't be you know completely restarted is ezra miller gonna be the flash still i don't know what do I think of this trailer though? I mean, if the DC universe was starting over completely, I definitely like the idea of Flashpoint. I mean, we kind of already knew it was going to be that ever since the inception of it. It was like, oh yeah, this is going to be Flashpoint. They're going to res reset the DCEU, which was the easy way out. And they took the easy way out. Flashpoint. It's the, it's the first thing you think of. Now, the actual movie itself, like some of the cinematography is fine. Um, it's definitely not the most dull superhero film ever. I like the shot where like he slides at the beginning on the pavement. It has some nice color grading. It's, it's vibrant, but not too vibrant. It has some of that snyder s stuff in there it, it's fine it's not like insane it has some jokes in there that give me mcu vibes look this is gonna be a superhero movie it's gonna be your average kind of popcorn movie thing you know there's gonna be the jokes in there that aren't really jokes they're just kind of like you smile a little bit or something I, i'm not sure what the purpose of them are but it's it's flashpoint i mean it makes sense i guess the idea of having two barry allens is kind of unique I'm not into Flash and the comics and stuff, so I don't know if that's like uh, from a story or something, but I mean, it kind of works. It's mainly used for comedy for some reason, in the trailer at least. But I think the main thing people want me to talk about and want everyone else to talk about is Batman in this movie. Now, we've known Batman, Michael Keaton Batman was in this movie since, since the freaking movie was announced. Like, the first trailer had Michael Keaton Batman, or at least teased him. What do I think of this? I mean... Batcave looks fine. It's a little plain compared to the actual movie, uh, 1989. Um, 
It looks fine though. His suit looks fine. Michael Keaton looks fine. Everything looks fine. I mean, there's a shot in the trailer that has like a ton of bat suits. They all look pretty cool, except one of them that has like hockey sticks on the back. I don't know what that was, but it looks fine. It's cool. I love Michael Keaton. You know this. I like Batman Returns and they're both like really dumb, like badly. I wouldn't say badly written. They're just very campy, like the first one was a little rushed. Uh, there's a lot of editing errors in the movie that are still there and stuff. And the some of the visual effects are a little like very, very dated and don't really have that artistic quality that keeps them, you know, okay. You, you know, it's not like a cartoon or something. It's, it's just, it's very dated. Returns is a little bit better because they had less of that visual effects stuff. It was more of it was in camera and stuff. And that was cool. The story itself for both Batman and Batman Returns is prob is pretty weak. I mean, Batman as a character is pretty weak in both of those films. He kills people. It's never explained why he kills people. It's He's a very flat character. And a lot of the good writing in those films comes, like, from the villains and stuff. So, like, I love Michael Keaton Batman. I, I think his he's so nostalgic. I love the music from those films. I, I love that stuff. When I see it in this movie, right... That's what they're doing. This movie is like made for me. It's like, please come watch this movie. We have one of your favorite Batman here. We, we're, we're calling back to this nostalgic movie that you like. Please come watch this. Please come watch this. Please come watch this Flash film that you probably wouldn't watch otherwise. And so it is, it's catering to, it's fan service. That's what it is. I guess the, the idea here is that someone read the Flash point comic book saw the idea of the Thomas Wayne Batman and was like, well, why don't we do it more so tied to the movie universe where we have a older Batman from a universe we already have in film, Michael Keaton. Makes sense kind of in like a production meaning, but in the film itself, why, wh why? You know, why? Michael Keaton's Batman, that whole universe is so incredibly distant. It's so different to anything related to the Zack Snyder universe, the DCEU, it's so different. The The Gotham City in Michael Keaton's Batman is so otherworldly. It's not realistic in any way. It's it's a completely, it's like in its own isolated bubble. I wouldn't even say it's in, in America or something. It's, it's this like crazy, weird Tim Burton world. And it has very little to do with the DCEU. Why is he here? I Like, I love Michael Keaton Batman, but why is he here? What does he have to do with this? You know, like, I think it would have made a lot more sense. And I think they might be doing this in the movie. He goes back in time and talks to an older um, Ben Affleck Batman who, like, became evil or something. I don't know. Something more along the lines of, like, Thomas Wayne Batman who could like teach him a few things or whatever, a more edgy Batman that could like say something about uh, Ben Affleck's Batman, have commentary on like, oh, why didn't people like Ben Affleck's Batman? Well, let's let's show that through this different alternate version of that Batman and kind of tie it all back to like BVS and like why was Batman that way? Why was he killing people and stuff? Like this movie is tying up the DCEU. And so like it's a perfect opportunity to do a lot of commentary on the DCEU and the events that happened, uh, its defining moments and how to wrap that and I'll tie it back and wrap it up. And so instead of just focusing on that, they have to have Michael Keaton Batman in the movie because nostalgia bait. Like he, he has nothing to do with this at all really. I mean, they could prove me wrong in the movie if I decide to go see it, but like, really, what does he have to do thematically with the DCEU? I do like the Man of Steel stuff, them like going back to the whole Man of Steel uh, part. That makes sense. Like, it's tying it back to where the universe started with Man of Steel. But Michael Keaton Batman, like, as much as I love it, as much as I love like the Batwing design, the Batcave looks great, freaking Michael Keaton looks great, they should have made a freaking, I don't know, Batman 3 or something. Make a Tim, Bur have Tim Burton direct a Batman 3, or maybe do a Batman Beyond movie in the uh, Tim Burton universe or something. It, this has nothing to do with The Flash. They couldn't just make a movie about The Flash. They had to make it about Batman. People are going to see this movie because it has Batman in it. What they're doing here in the suit and everything, it's like, that's good. Like, it looks good. Why is it here, though? You know, if you really wanted Michael Keaton to come back, 
put it in his own movie or something. Uh, instead, this is a it's a business decision. It's a way to get as many people as possible to come see this Flash movie so that they understand that the universe is resetting. That's... I mean, that's how I feel about it. I know there's Supergirl in the movie as well, um, all that stuff. Some of the CGI looks unfinished, but that's every superhero movie that's ever existed. It, it's just, you know, it's going to be your normal superhero movie. It's going to have a joke every five minutes. Um, Michael Keaton will have a few lines, like he's going to say, oh, I'm Batman. And it's so weird that he says it that way. Oh, yeah, I'm Batman. It's as if this Batman knows he's in a movie. I don't know the context of that in the movie itself, but, like, why did he say it like that? As if, like, oh, yeah, I know we're in a movie right now. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm Batman, you know. I know you probably saw my movie and stuff. It's like, no, like, why is he talking like that? And, of course, we all know Ezra Miller went on a whole escapade where they, uh, did a few crimes, assaulted a few people. That was not very good, so I don't know how to feel about that. I'm not sure if I'll even see this movie in theaters unless, literally, unless there's reviews that are like, this was unexpectedly good. Like, <laughs> stuff they didn't show in the trailer, like, this stuff is unexpectedly good, or the trailer makes it look more, like, generic than it actually is, but I highly doubt that'll actually happen. People are also talking about the, I think it's Ben Affleck Batman has like a blue cowl in one of the shots. Uh, okay. Putting Batman in a blue outfit isn't enough for me. Like I actually want the narrative to be interesting. Like people obsess with the Spider-Man suits. Like sure, like a good Spider-Man suit is great. It adds a lot, but it's not everything. It, it really doesn't matter as much to me. It's about the narrative. It's about the filmmaking of whatever film you're talking about. I like movies that respect the comics, but I'm not going to like praise a movie for putting in a design that's from the comics or taking homage from the comics. I think people are so, I guess, jaded by movies making heroes too realistic or over-designing them that when they get something that's the bare minimum work you have to do, make a blue Batman for once, uh, people lose their minds over that and think it's amazing. Like, I really don't care. It's if that character is well written, then I'll care. If it actually emotionally connects to me, then I'll care. But him just having a blue suit, like, you know, it doesn't mean anything to me at the moment. I haven't seen the movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all this aesthetic stuff doesn't matter yet. I feel like people's standards need to be a lot higher. Them doing Tim Burton Batman, Michael Keaton Batman well, doing the Batcave well, the aesthetics, the look of him well, doesn't actually mean anything yet until it actually narratively impacts the film, unless it narratively connects back to the film and makes sense in the film and adds something to it. Right now, the aesthetics of it is just like, oh, that's pretty, I guess, but it's not just about something being pretty. If comic books are so important, then we need to have films that are impactful, that actually mean something, that aren't going to be forgotten in 10 years. You know, Quantumania or whatever right now, I've been hearing bad reviews about that. Are people going to remember that in 10 years? Did it actually say anything that's actually important, or was it just, oh, they made references to the comics, so I'm going to go see it? Are these actually movies, or are they just comic references with a few jokes in there? You know, what are we, what are we looking for? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's probably a rant. I don't know if people like that. There's a whole culture on YouTube that loves freaking people ranting about things and raving about things. And some of them don't even believe it. But when I like criticize something, it's not even, and if you watch my Andor video, which I'll plug that because no one watched it, few people did. I don't hate these people who work on this stuff. You know, their job isn't to make something that I like personally. They make something that people, a general consumer will buy. And a general consumer is going to buy something where it's like, oh, Michael Keaton Batman is in the movie? That's crazy. I'm gonna go see it. That's who they're making the film for. I can't blame them for that. I'm criticizing the the fact that it has to be that way in the first place. I'm not criticizing the people who are making the film. They're talented, but the film itself, what it means and like its impact is very important to me. So I take that pretty seriously. 